Heidi ho there my lovies and welcome back to crazy but not dangerous I'm Shorty Vaughn and I've got a really great budget meal today we're gonna be cooking soup beans that's what my mother would call them and she made them quite often summer winter spring and fall didn't matter to her and she would serve it alongside a great crusty buttery cornbread you know we're not having the cornbread today but uh, we are going to have some flaxseed tortillas because it makes your coat so shiny. Anyhow, yeah, we're going to have soup beans today and it's going to cost us uh, right around the $5 mark. And it's the ultimate budget meal because it is going to make a ton. And then I am going to use the leftover beans in different, applica in different applications. So, yeah, let's quit beating around the bean, ha, 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 and let's cook some. Yay, hooray, yippee, skippy. I have two pounds of pinto beans here. They are dry beans. Got them over at my Dollar Tree, and two pounds. I washed them, I rinsed them, I sorted them, and what do I mean by sorting? Well, I just kind of went through them when they before they went in the water looked for any rocks because you know you don't want a dental emergency you don't want to blow your profit margin on your soup beans by having you know a $500 cap or what have you well I'm sure it's much more than $500 yeah so make sure you don't have any rocks make sure if you have any beans that don't look appetizing they kind of look shriveled or gross or whatever if they're unappealing to you now they'll look even worse once you cook them all right so i've let them soak overnight and i'm going to go ahead and just dump those in the colander to drain and there we go missed one all right those look pretty fantastic hey hooray they don't need to be perfectly dry because we're just going to move them over to my electric pressure canner and add some water to them and some other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We don't get over to this side of the kitchen very often, but I have this little utility cart. It's kind of where I keep all of my appliances and I like it because they are all at um, eye level for me and easy to get in, easy to get out. This is a Nesco electric pressure canner, but it also works as a pressure cooker, a slow cooker, a water bath, a steamer. Um, you can boil and brown in it. Yeah, it's all in one. I like, I like electronics and I like kitchen gadgets, but I don't like a one hit wonder. So Andrew bought this for me as an anniversary gift because he's so romantic. Actually, it was exactly what I wanted and exactly what I asked for, so I cannot complain. And I do kind of think it's a romantic gift because I'm a practical woman. So let's put our beans in. Here we go. Now this is a large pressure canner, pressure cooker, and it can do two pounds of beans. If you have a smaller one, check to see how many pounds of beans that you can do in yours. You don't want the top to blow off. Can you imagine the mess? Lord have mercy on all of us. Now the other day I cooked a pork shoulder and I saved the bone. And as you can see, I left plenty of meat on that baby. Absolutely. Because I do like meat in my soup beans. And that is a preference, and today we can afford it, so we are going to do it. I also have a little bit of that fat cap, and I'm going to go ahead and throw that right on in there. Sometimes, if I did not have meat to add to this, I would add a little bit of vegetable oil or olive oil to give my, you know, the soup, the soupy liquid part, a little bit more body, a little bit more flavor, but instead because we have some great pork today, I am going to go ahead and add that fat cap right in there. Now I will pick it out and um, you know set it aside when I go to serve it. 
I don't really want to eat that portion, but it will make my liquid unctuous and give it great body and great flavor. Um, at my Dollar Tree, you can also buy a ham hock for $1.25 in the refrigerator freezer section if you're lucky enough to have one. Um, they always have ham hocks for $1.25. Sometimes they're 50% off. And then you should buy two if you can afford it because you'll have one for this time. Put the other one in the freezer. Have it for next time too. I like that. I'm going to add some granulated garlic. Hello, Gilroy. You know, just until, you know, my ancestors whispered. It's all right. You got it, baby. And a little bit of onion powder. And a couple of teaspoons of tomato powder. And those are just simply tomatoes that I have dried and then ran through my food processor to make a great tomato powder. All of these are optional. All you really need is a little bit of salt pepper, that kind of thing. They're going to be delicious no matter what. Ooh, a little chili powder. Yeah, chili powder would be amazing. Taco seasoning, hot dog. All right, I'm also going to need about 10 cups of water. So there's about five. And that makes 10. starting to smell good already. Okay, I have a 10 pound weight on here. Let's go ahead and get this baby locked down. And I need to get it turned to airtight. And I'm gonna press pressure cook. And I'm gonna do, set it, I'm gonna set it for 50 minutes. They say that if you pre-soak your beans, you can take seven to 10 minutes off of your cook time. But I happen to know that these beans are a little bit ancient, a little bit ancient because I got two pounds for a dollar. And so, yeah, I don't know when they changed the price, but it was a big bag for a dollar. And I felt like I scored and I think I bought like 10 bags of them. Yeah, this is my last bag. And then we've gone down to the smaller one pound bags for $1.25. But sometimes the Dollar Tree is the only place that I can find um, pinto beans or any kind of bean for that matter, dry bean at least. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get this set for 50 minutes. And now it's going to come up in pressure. I've got it on airtight and I'm going to let it go for 50 minutes. I'm going to let it do a naturally natural release because I'm not in any great rush today. And like I said, these beans are as old as the hills. They're still going to be terrific, but they're going to need all the love we can get them. You got some old beans hanging around. You don't know how long they've been in there. Don't worry about it, baby. It'll be all right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, bring it back when the 50 minutes is up. My natural release is done. Show you how my beans turned out. Tender and delicious. Fingers crossed. I've got a question for you, loveys. So if you use a measuring cup and all you measure is water, does that still need to be washed? Or can you just dry it? I never know which one. I usually just go ahead and wash it to be on, you know, the safe side. But yeah, it only had water in it. Do you wash it or just turn it upside down and dry it? Or yeah, what do you do when it's only had water in it? Let me know. Hey, my lovelies. Well, the beans uh, and the pork shoulder bone were in the pressure cooker for 50 minutes. And then I let them do about 30 minutes on a natural release. Now I have them over there just boiling. They are tender. All of the meat has fallen off of that bone. I fished out that fat cap and I fished out the bone. Come right here. So, yep, those are my discards, and 
you know, maybe I'll let Pigpen play with that bone. He's only got one tooth. So really what he does with the bone is just sits there and licks it until he's exhausted. Then he goes and takes a little nap and then I throw it in the trash. Yeah, but he loves it and, you know, and he'll sit there and lick on that for an hour or two until his tongue is tired and he's just, and then he falls asleep and when he wakes up, he doesn't miss it. Anyhow, I will probably let him play with that tomorrow. Got a little onion here, and I'm going to go ahead and give this a good chippity chop. Now we've gone on to the soup making portion. So I took my pressure canner, steamer, you know, multi-purpose little thing over there, and I set it to brown, which is also the boil function. So it's over there just, you know, boiling away, getting ready for the veg, because you know, that's my favorite part. I've got a little celery here and some baby carrots, and I'm gonna chop up one onion and throw those in. Um, if you didn't have a ham hock, if you didn't have a um, pork shoulder bone or anything to throw into your beans, but you do have a little bouillon cube, or maybe you have some veg stock or something like that in your freezer or up in the cupboard in a can or um, one of those squeezy cartons, go ahead and throw that in. That would be delicious. Absolutely. Uh, veg stock, anything would work. If all you've got is salt, baby, add it. It'll be just fine. Absolutely. I also have a green bell pepper. And I thought, why not? That sounded good to me. Clean out your veg drawer. You know, you got to get your veg in. You need all the vitamins and minerals that you can get. So whatever, like, whatever you like. Whatever rocks your boat. So have y'all done anything fun or exciting today? Um, let's see. I fertilized in the backyard. I changed the sheets on all the beds. And uh, that was a job. I hate to change the sheets on the bed. Oh, I scrubbed the shower. Now I don't scrub very often because I have this little misting spray that I put out you know, I, I spray it on after I get out of the shower, and it doesn't need a scrub very often. Probably about every two or three weeks, I just give it a good once over just to make sure that I'm not getting a lot of hard water. Because even though I scrubbed today, I did not scrub very hard. And if you don't keep up on that hard water, and our water is really hard, then boy, you can get behind the eight ball on that, and it is just miserable. So, scrubbed the shower, and then made dinner, came on here to talk to all my lovies, because I missed you, and uh, yesterday I just rested, and I chatted with some friends, and all of those good things, just had a little restful day. Every once in a while, you just got to take a little bit of a break. I did not cook dinner last night. It was finned for yourself, and I was A-OK -okay with that. No worries. All right. Let's go ahead and get this on into the, into the pot. Get it all vegged up, and then we're going to add some more seasonings, too. Okay, so we had a small technical difficulty, but I got all my carrots, celery, onion in there, and now it is considerably thicker and a little bit more vibrant in color. Yay, hooray. Gonna let that just go on ahead and continue to do its thing. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to add several grinds of cracked black pepper to this because I do want it to be well seasoned. And we've got the garlic and we've got the onion in there. That's going to be terrific. 
and I am going to add salt, and I'm going to add enough for now, but I am going to let it cook and see how much more we might need because actually celery is quite salty, so I want to give it a chance to develop its flavor for that celery to let out some of its salt. I'll test it again, taste it, see if we need um, another another little bit of salt in there. I don't want to raise my blood pressure too much, but I also don't want to eat bland and boring food. I have some spike no salt seasoning, and I think this is just delicious. And I will go ahead and throw quite a bit of that in there too. And that's kind of the same as like a Lowry's, except no salt. They do have a salt version. They have um, a regular version. They have a spicy version. We're just using regular today. And yeah, if you wanted to season your beans, if you had put some taco seasoning in there um, and you wanted to throw a jar of salsa in on top of it, I have done that before and it is quite delicious. Anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and just let this soup bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, you know, just let it go for a little while. We'll come back and take a look at it and see what's going on. Speaking of wives' tales, my mother had a million of them. She loved them and she believed all of them. Like, oh, my hand's so itchy. Her left hand. My left hand's so itchy, we're going to get money. Yeah, somebody better go check the mail. I bet there's a check in the mail. Oh, it's just killing me. I don't know what was wrong with her hand, but there was never a check in the mail. And if her right hand was itchy, nope, it's no check. We're going to get a house guest. An unwanted one, no doubt about it. Anyhow, yeah, she loved those. Um, if you had a headache, she would slice a potato and give it to you to put over your eyes. Go lay down, child, and put the potato on your eyes. The potato will draw out the headache. That didn't really work, but it did feel nice and cold on your face, and you did lay down, and maybe you felt better. Yeah, that, you know, kiss on the head. Chicken soup really is a good wife's tale. That really does work. It does make you feel better, comforted, loved, especially if somebody made it for you. Yeah, chicken soup. That's a wife's tale worth passing around. I'll get behind that one. Um, what else? Oh, if you had a cold to put onions in your socks. Yeah. Oh, you've got a cold. Let me put, she'd slice an onion and put it in your socks and put you to bed. And the onion would draw out the cold. I, I, she had a million home remedies and, um, and, and a million wife's tales. Step on a crack, break your mother's back. You know, don't, yeah, nine kids, her back was not in good shape. Don't step on that crack. Do you have a favorite wife's tale? I want to know. Tell me down below. Tonight I am not making cornbread because we're on this low carb journey. But I have these extreme wellness, high fiber, um, carb friendly tortillas. And we are going to be enjoying those night. Yay for it. Now, if you need a good cornbread recipe, go visit my friend Rhonda over at Rhonda's Country Kitchen. She has an excellent cornbread recipe. It's fantastic. I'll link her information down below for you. So, these are actually pretty good. They're not too thick. They're not too thin. And they are pretty soft. They are not a bargain. Um, but they are keto friendly. And yay hooray for that. Now I am gonna cheat a little bit and I have a little bit of butter right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and give one of them a smear with some butter. Yep, absolutely. You know, just a that little bit of decadence makes all the difference in the world sometimes. You can just enjoy that and just keep on going and it's not much it's not even it's not even a teaspoon of butter on there but it is going to make that feel really decadent and you know sometimes you just need a little bit of something 
Then I'm going to take the other tortilla. That one's mine. This one's Andrew's. And I'm going to press it on there so it can share the butter. And then I have a slightly dampened paper towel. And I will go ahead and put that in the microwave for like 25 seconds just to heat it up a little bit, melt that butter, get my side and his side all, you know, together, all buttery and fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you know, some people say to me, Shorty Vaughn, are you always so happy? Are you always so cheerful? Well, I have bad days. Yeah. I don't make a video on bad days because who wants to see me all cranky? It ain't pretty, I can tell you that right now. But am I always so happy? Yeah, I can usually always find something to be happy about. And let me just share with you some of these um, photos that I took of tonight's sunset. It was spectacular. We kind of had a sunset rainbow situation going on, which I have never seen before. But I wasn't disappointed one bit. It was quite the show. So excited about that. My beans are almost, yeah, we are there. We are there. I'm just waiting on everybody to finish up. We got about 15 minutes to Jeopardy. I'm going to start making plates pretty quick. But you know, it's what it's time for. It's time for classic TV trivia. Yay, hooray. I love it. You all are fantastic at it. So, yeah, let's do, let's get a question. So you know what it's time for. It's time for classic TV trivia question. Hot diggity, I love it. Now I'm gonna ask you a question about my absolute favorite classic TV sitcom, which is The Bob Newhart Show. I think Bob Newhart is funny. I have always loved his comedic timing and he, the man's got a great poker face to be envied for sure. Okay, so classic TV trivia time. The Bob Newhart Show. Bob and Emily live in, a, in an apartment in Chicago. Who is their next door neighbor right across the hall? And bonus points if you can remember what he did for a living. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love Bob Newhart and I still watch it almost every single night before I go to bed. You know, if I don't fall asleep right after Jeopardy. So, yeah, if I'm up late and Bob Newhart comes on, on one of my classic TV channels, I watch that. Yep, yep. And love the music to it. I miss, I miss jazz. Yeah, I remember we would go into stores and some jazz would be playing. And all of those great 70s and early 80s TV shows had great jazz music in them. Yeah, miss jazz. Yeah, do, do you like jazz? Let me know. All right, my lovies. Well, here you have it. I've got a big pot of soup beans. I've got an apple. I did the numbers and we could have the car we could have carbs from the apple and also from the tortilla because this meal is so high in protein and fiber. Yay, hooray. It's really going to be filling. It's warm and delicious and comforting and perfect for a cold um, night like tonight. It's already down into the 50s and I'm getting ready to put my flannel nightgown on, watch some Jeopardy and go to bed. Yay, hooray. All right, my lovelies, I hope that you're warm and full and loved tonight wherever you are. Be good, be careful, look both ways. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. Have a good night, bye.